So one of the main mistakes is when you make a move, you have to make sure in the end you just go here, everything is protected, my queen is stuck, p7 is hanging, and you have a wonderful development. What's up chess player, welcome to the Journey to Grand Master, the place where you can improve every single aspect of your chess game, and we are gonna play against uh, our viewer here, almost 1300 rated player here, he starts with knight to f3, very interesting move, like normally on this level they play e4 or d4, and okay, let me choose my strategy, I somehow want to play c5, I want to be aggressive from the very beginning, and let's see what happens. So my opponent plays c3, probably he wants to play uh, the move d4 later on and somehow attack in the center, but I frankly don't really get this strategy, like we could immediately play d4 in the first place if you want to do that, or yeah, I'm not sure, this feels a little bit weird, although yeah, I guess still pretty normal. So I'm gonna just play knight to c6 now. Okay, my opponent does go for d4, I guess that is the right move, of course, he needs to fight for the center. And the point of this video is to show you the common mistakes on this level, like uh, 1000 to 1500 uh, level, but well, it's one of us, it's a member of our community, so I expect him to know all of the golden principles I teach so often on this channel, like playing in the center, all of the main events are gonna happen in the center of the board, so you can never just ignore it, so I like the move d4. Well, I also need to fight for the center, because if I don't do that, my opponent is gonna use it, go forward, play d5, then my knight is in trouble, I don't want that, so I have to do that on my own, I have to fight for the center, play d5, because it's gonna open up my bishop, and that's essential, and also not allow uh, my opponent to play e4, because in this case he's gonna control the entire center, and that's not great. As for taking the pawn on c5, I'm not really afraid of that because I'm gonna play e5 and I'm gonna just attack my opponent uh, in the center having two uh, very strong central points so that should be good for me. Okay bishop goes to f4 so it feels now that my opponent is creating some kind of a London system structure which I'm not a big fan of but of course it's a very solid legitimate opening is white and I always want to play something like queen b6 as a response to that. Now I might understand why he didn't that way actually, because he somehow tried to trick me and probably he had succeed, because if I knew that he would play London system in the first place, probably I would play something else like d6, just to make sure this bishop is not that great, or um, yes, a knight f6, c5, e6 ideas, but without the move d5, I like, I like those systems so much. But it wasn't clear he's gonna play the London system, he played this weird move c3, that I, uh, then d4, and I needed to play d5, and now he's going for bishop f4. That is quite creative, I have to say. But my normal response here is queen to b6, trying to put pressure. Okay, he goes for queen to c2. I don't like this move, because what about the d4 pawn? It's hanging now two times, and I'm attacking it three times. So here we go. The main topic of the video is main mistakes on the level, well, I would say from 1,000 to 1,500. So one of the main mistakes is when you make a move, you have to make sure that once you're making that move, like you are imagining it in your head, I'm gonna make the move queen to c2. Am I losing any pieces afterwards? Are, what what has changed in the position? That is always the question you, you should ask yourself to help yourself to figure it out. Like, the queen was on d1, it's now going to c2, and you have to think about two things. First, what the queen is doing on c2 that it's not doing, uh, it wasn't doing on d1. Well, it helps to protect the b2 pawn, that's a good thing, I don't know, maybe it controls this diagonal, where, which makes bishop f5 more difficult to play, by the way, that might still be uh, possible for black. And then the second thing is, what is the queen not doing, because it's not on d1 anymore? And the answer is, it's not protecting the pawn on d4 anymore. That is a very big concern, of course, if you think whether some attack is dangerous for you or not, you always need to calculate the numbers of attackers and the numbers of defenders. You have, If you have enough, like the same 
amount of defenders, like your opponent has uh, attackers, then you are good to go. But in this case, I have more attackers, which makes it, yeah, the d4 pawn very vulnerable. Now, I can still calculate this move bishop f5, because if you take it, I'm going to take here, and it seems like there is no way to save that rook on a1. You can take on, d uh, on d5, I take on a1, and then this knight is also in trouble. You can, of course, go back somehow, like e4 or b3. But black is still in a change up. But maybe after bishop f5, uh, white can correct their mistake and play queen b3. By the way, instead of queen to c2, queen to b3 is quite a normal uh, way to deal with such a problem, because then if I take on d4, you can just take my queen and then take back the d4 pawn. Everything is absolutely fine for white. So I want to take the pawn on d4. I don't see why it's bad for me. I take it, he takes. Now, that is a mistake so many low-rated uh, players are making, and hopefully you're never going to do that. Just making your move without calculating any variations at all. Just never do that. If you have a, a few minutes on your clock, just never do that. So I want to calculate the move takes. He takes it back. I take it here. Now, for example, one thing I could have blundered here was if the bishop would have uh, would have been unprotected here. Thank God it's protected by my rook, so it's not a problem. Now I'm attacking the queen and the knight. Probably the most active move is to take for white. I take it back. There are no checks. Well, when once I take with the knight, he has this check attacking the knight, but I can just step back with my knight and there is absolutely no problems. So, yeah, it seems like I'm just winning the pawn. Yes, you might argue he has some kind of compensation afterwards, but first of all, uh, this bishop is hanging, so he has to play something like e3, then I have to go back, and then, yeah, he has some kind of uh, development advantage, like knight c3, and maybe knight b5 is coming. That is... Can it be that it's some kind of gambit I'm not aware of? Because for me it felt like like a pawn sacre, uh, well, rather pawn blunder, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he knows his stuff and that is just a pawn sacrifice. And he is well prepared here. Because once again, once I take everything, he plays e3. I go back to b6, let's say, because, well, I can give a check, but yeah, maybe it makes sense. Knight c3, at least I'm building this knight for a bit. And then, can I still play bishop f5? It takes, I take on b2, attacking that guy and that guy. And then rook to c1 is not possible, because remember, this pawn is on e3, blocking the diagonal. Okay, I want to take it. I mean, that's the most active move. I want to go for it and see what happens. If my opponent tricked me, well, that would be a good lesson for me to learn, that never underestimate your opponent. I try to never do it, but feels like a pawn for me. And if I can get a pawn and get away with that, I want to do that. Imagine how cool it would be to play chess without ever having opening travels again. What if I told you I could teach you all openings you will ever need in just 10 days? You get lifetime access to more than 110 pure value video tutorials, almost 100 practical tasks to apply your knowledge immediately into practice, 30 plus bonus videos to dive 10 times deeper, as well as private community where all questions you might ever have are answered daily. Get the $200 limited time discount with the link in the description and forget about all opening pain once and for all. Okay, so we are going into the direction. Basically, knight takes e5 is the same thing. I just have one additional opportunity of playing e5, which, well, I have to consider. Now it's basically a threat to win a piece, so he has to take here, and then if I take back, then I just lose a pawn. But what if I take there? I get a pair of bishops, but my pawn structure is horrible. This pawn is isolated, those pawns are double. Doubled, I don't like it. And also the knight is coming back to d4 where it just has a perfect outpost position. Okay, so, yeah. Well, I'm curious. Yes, I understand my king is in the center. That might be a little bit dangerous, a little bit tricky, but I hope it's not going to be enough. So let's calculate something else. Queen takes d4, e3, queen b4, check, knight c3. Yeah, but I do have this bishop f5 idea. Maybe my opponent has something like bishop b5 check. And then I take it, he takes, I take there, he plays knight c7 check and wins the rook. That's actually bad. And if I have to go like king d8, 
after bishop b5 check, that is not great. Then he can just take it and threaten. Wait a second, that is very bad variation. Bishop f5 doesn't work at all because in the end of the day, he's gonna have bishop b5 check and queen d7 checkmate. No, I cannot afford that. Okay, maybe maybe it is tricky. What about bishop f5 right now? Yeah, he can just play queen d2. That would spoil my initial idea of winning the pawn. Yeah, bishop f5 now feels pretty weird. So, queen takes d4, e3. Maybe I don't need the check, but he's still coming with knight c3, and then the pawn is hanging. Okay, so takes e3, queen b4, check, knight c3. Now, what can I do? Bishop f5 is not a move. Let's say I just play knight f6 because I want to continue my development. Now, after bishop b5 check, I do have bishop d7. And then if takes, I can take it back. d5 pawn is hanging, but the knight is pinned. For now, he plays a3, I can just step back somewhere. Like c5. And then, yeah, seems like I'm protecting the pawn for now. Well, I always want to take the, that risk. I want to see what happens, so I'm going to take it and see how my opponent can prove his initiative, his compensation in terms of pieces activity for this pawn. Okay, he goes for e3. Yeah, I guess that's the most active move. Now, queen e4, might that be an idea? Because I just realized bishop d3 is not really a move. There is uh, queen takes g2, but there is a check. I always forget about this check. And then, yeah, I'm in big trouble. Probably it's just close to a checkmate. So queen b4 is basically my only ch chance. Well, queen to b6 is also possible because it does stop this check, which is by far the most... Uh, dangerous thing, but he has knight c3 and then it's a double attack. Knight takes d5 is a threat and bishop b5 check is a threat. And then if I play knight f6 there, bishop b5 check, I go bishop d7, he takes, I take, and d5 pawn is going to be lost. So queen b4 is superior, at least it feels like that. Okay, he goes actually knight d2. All of my concerns about knight c3 were not that relevant. But I do feel that knight c3 is 100% is more active move. And that is, by the way, another a big mistake that so many lower, uh, lower rated players are making, not going for the most active move. Knight c3 has so many more opportunities. It attacks the d5, uh, the d5 pawn. It creates a threat of bishop b5, which is incredibly annoying. Now it just doesn't exist. And on d2, the knight has absolutely no prospects, even if it's not uh, pinned anymore, like you can play a3 before and then free your knight. But where the knight should go? It has, it has to spend two more tempi to get to d4. Yeah, just a waste of time. Knight c3 was so much more active. Not sure why my opponent didn't do it, but how do I continue? So bishop b5 is not a threat. I feel like I want to continue my development. In every case, on knight to f6 seems like a way to do that. First, I make sure I cover that square additionally, uh, in case of some checks, which, well, hopefully wouldn't be possible anyway. And then, yeah, of course, I need to bring my king to the safety. Alternative can be bishop d7, preparing rook c8, but feels a little bit artificial, to be honest. I want to develop my knight first. Yeah, my opponent goes for a3, and now I just realized this move bishop c7 felt a little bit dangerous for me, but now I realize I just have queen c6, and then my opponent exchanges the queens. That is the best thing that can happen to me. So it's important not to play queen a5, because then bishop c7 is a real problem. The queen has no moves, and if I play b6, then queen comes to c6 with huge, huge effect. So it's very important. Like, your queen is under attack. You need to find the best square for your queen to go. To do that, you need, first of all, to find all of the moves available for you. Like, here I can only go to b6 and a5, so not that many choices. Now, how do I choose, uh, how do I choose which one is better? I calculate both. I see what kind of opportunities my opponent has, and I always start with the most active options, which are checks, captures, threats, and active moves. Well, checks are not really there. Well, queen b6, there is queen a4, but I can just block it. Then 
captures. Well, there is nothing really to capture. And then there is the threat attacking the queen, either b4 or bishop c6. Uh, sorry, bishop c7. I don't really like both, but bishop c7 is just winning the game. So queen a5 doesn't work for that reason. Queen b6, yeah, then it's not such a problem because I have queen c6. Okay, bishop g3 has been played. Well, yeah, it's a developing move. I can't say anything bad, but it does feel like it doesn't create any threats for me. And that is making my life much simpler in terms of well, worried, uh, worrying about my king. I can just continue normally, bishop d7, rook c8. It's not like I'm in danger. And yeah, I guess that started with the move knight d2. After knight d2, I don't see real ways to create uh, big problems for black. So yeah, I have to decide what what do I do? I had one idea with g6, bishop f5, which doesn't make any sense anymore. I have another idea with bishop d7, rook c8. I like this idea. It's just that my king is still in the center, but yeah, at least it's it's well defended by so many different pieces. So I guess I'm fine. And then rook c8 with a tempo, and then e6, bishop d6 would be on my agenda. Okay. Castles, yeah. What what I like is my opponent is developing all of the pieces. That's already for a thirteen hundred rated player. Incredibly important, and yeah, I'm glad he does it. All of the pieces are developed. Castles is made now. The rooks, I mean, all of the minor pieces are developed now. The rooks have to go into the play, and he has some compensation due to the fact that my development is far from being over, but. I have an extra pawn for that. I have spent some time to take it and go back, so that is how it normally works. Okay, queen goes to b3, which is, yeah, on the one hand, unexpected for me because I have an extra pawn, so it's a dream for me to exchange the queens because it's going to be simpler to um, convert my advantage. On the other hand, the problem for white was there was no real good square to, to put the queen to. Yeah, but maybe he still has some compensation because I'm still far away from finishing my development and he's going to play rook c, uh, rook c1, exchange the rooks, then maybe bring the other rook uh, to c7. Yeah, that might be might be a problem for me. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have played rook c8. Maybe I should have started with that. Okay, I'm pretty low on time, so I have to go on. I, I'm just one tempo short of playing e6, uh, bishop e7 and castles. Unfortunately, that might be problematic. Also, if I take, then this knight might be coming all the way to uh, to a5. So maybe I just ignore that for now and play a6 immediately. Okay, he takes. Might be wondering why I uh, allowed him to take, and uh, now I have double pawns. Double pawns are overestimated. It's not such a big deal, but what is important that the knight is still there, so I have a little bit of time to play the move bishop c6 and somehow avoid my problems here. Yeah, there was this b4 and b5 idea, I just realized I'm still one tempo short to make castle, so that was pretty dangerous. a4 on the other hand, I don't understand that idea at all. I even have the move bishop b4 with a tempo, which solves pretty much all of my problems here. Okay, that goes to f3, and now finally castles is possible, and then this a4 is just going to be a weakness. I don't get it. Bishop goes to b5. Yeah, at least that protects the pawn. Maybe the knight is going to d4 or e5 as well. Okay, I'm very low on time, so let me take it here. And then maybe go knight e4. That feels active. The move forward is always good. Okay, rook goes to d1. Yeah, I guess I can still play rook to c5 attacking that, because if he takes, I have pawn takes. Although, yeah, then the second rook comes there. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm going to start with f6. Knight to d4. Wait, what about e5? I am attacking both of the pieces. Knight d6, I still take it. Sorry, but I don't get it. Okay, knight goes to e6, but I do get two pieces for a rook. Not sure where. Which one to take first. Maybe rook e8 is also a move, but. Yeah, somehow that's too complicated. Okay, he takes there. I guess I take here. Mm. Maybe even on e3. Because I threatened to play e2. Although maybe knight e8. No, checkmate is not there. So I can do that. Yeah, and here maybe even bishop c4. 
five. No, he has rook takes, right? But then I have knight takes, and the knight has nowhere to escape. Otherwise, I threaten to take here and win the rook. That is pretty interesting. Okay, he goes for knight six, but why can't I just take it and win the rook? I guess, yeah, that just doesn't work for white. Yeah, so the problem is you must always and always calculate the variations. You must always start with a check, because bishop e3 was the check and the only one possible after knight e6, so you must have calculated that. I'm just taking the rook. Okay, now I can even take another pawn. Just, yeah, exchanging. If you have extra material, you are always happy to exchange as much stuff as possible. And knight c5 seems to just exchange the knight, so that helps me hugely. Okay, I'm completely fine with having an extra knight here. Yeah, just grabbing the pawn. I mean, not necessarily. I can also just bring my king, but well, that's another passer, so why not? And then very important, just to make sure this king has absolutely no way to go forward. I guess knight c7 is the best way, because then it's not possible to attack here. Although knight d6 is also fine. Yeah, everything wins. King goes to the center. Very important, always bring your king to the action in the end game, and in most of the cases, center is where the actions are gonna happen. And of course, when you have passers, you have to use it. Not just enjoy it and be happy that it's there, but really use it and push it as fast as possible and as far as possible. If you have multiple passers, of course, you can push all of them. Okay. My opponent resigns. Let us take a look at the game review together. Yeah, we have here the numbers 71 and 91, not that bad. Uh, and the rating numbers, I never understand how they are working, but that's what we get. I guess 1900 is pretty good since you are around 1300. What's, what is your impression? Yeah, I, I I don't get the same numbers here. I get 1850, but it's pretty close. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, it's too bad I started blundering at the end. I, I think I was defending myself pretty well, but the, which is not normal. I was playing white. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's the best I, I could do. Uh, I need to to take more time. And, uh, you know, I don't I don't play well under time pressure, basically. And at the end, I, I start playing too fast. But why did you do that? You had quite a lot of time. Yeah, I know. I just get nervous. Um, actually, uh, I don't know why. I should have really taken my time, especially when I lost the rook. That was so avoidable. I just had to move my king. Um, okay, okay, let's go through the main points here and see what happened. First of all, this queen c2 move, was it a sacrifice or was it a blunder? Why is it a sacrifice? Uh, the pawn on d4. No, because I thought your queen uh, was going to uh, to b2. Yeah, but you have plenty of other ways to deal with that problem. Like queen b3, for example, is a normal way. And then just exchange the queens if I take on d4. All right, okay. Yeah. It's a typical way of dealing it, but it seems like queen c2 is uh, the best move according to the engine. So I was wondering whether that was a blunder or you just really wanted to sacrifice that pawn on d4 and get some initiative for it. Uh, no, actually, I was protecting b2. Um, and well, of course, I like to put the queen there because uh, obviously you can combine it with the uh, the white bishop and and go, you know, put some pressure on on h7 at some stage in the game um and and you force the knight to stay uh, to stay uh, on on f6 for black to defend uh, h7 so i i like to have this uh, this combination i was going to bring the well if you had given me the the occasion to do it i was going to bring the bishop to uh, to d3 yeah okay have you thought about bishop f5 here Yes, um, 
but then I would have, yeah, yeah, I saw it, but I would have moved to uh, to to B three. But I wanted to keep the queen for for white. I think you're better off when you keep the the white queen. Um, yeah, I would have moved uh, right there, and, okay. and if if you would have moved your pawn forward, I would have swapped the queens. Because actually, bishop f5 is a very bad move, and queen takes a five wins the game here, plus three for white. Oh my god. I take here. You just but take I lose my five. rook. Oh. Exactly. Really? But in the end, you just go here. Everything is protected. My queen is stuck. B7 is hanging, and you have a wonderful development. Wow. Yeah, I almost uh, got your queen later on in the game, um, but I was yeah. missing. I was missing one tempo. Okay, let's see what happened later on. So queen c2 was actually a very good move. Um, I'm not sure what is the real difference. Ah, okay, I did have, I was calculating here if I, but I said that you are taking here, and then if I take here, you can just go back, and then you have a beautiful outpost, and I have horrible pawn structure, but it seems like it's a huge advantage for black. Maybe not huge, but uh, yeah. Uh, Minus zero point eight, just bishop. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. And then some weird move, queen h six. Yeah, that is pure that's, computer chess. That's hard to find. Yeah, yeah. I thought somehow this knight is so stable on d four, so I refused to play uh, e five here. Mm. And that is a mistake. Okay, so yeah, I. I Felt like there should be quite a lot of initiative because you are very active here. And my concern was this move knight to c3. And that is the best move. Because you are threatening here bishop b5 check, you're attacking the pawn. I mean, you are gonna play a3 before. Yeah, I thought I thought that was good actually. I thought, you know, the idea was to use your queen to develop, basically. Uh, because the queen is is alone over there. And so you know, my idea was to expand and and take some some space as much as I could, um, chasing the queen. So why didn't you play knight c three? Knight c three. Yeah, right here. Mm, I, yeah, could I? I didn't think it was urgent to do that, but uh, obviously it's it's the best. I think the pawn. Uh, the pawn on uh, on on a2 was uh, was better to gain some space and you know i was trying to chase the queen i was really focused on chasing the queen yeah but it's a check now so oh, you... oh oh yeah check okay um yeah um oh why? no because you you could have just pushed your pawn uh pushed your pawn which uh, one the d5 to d4 that's a horrible, horrible decision. I'm I'm lost immediately here. Why? It's, you just put your bishop. It's breaking the probably the most important principle. Never go all in into the attack. If your king is still in the center, you have no development. You just never can do that. But but and your you bishop can, protects. You can put your bishop and then yeah. just through d1 or something and, and ah. that's game over. I was so scared of that pawn, but you're right. I should have seen that. Oh yeah, okay. It's, wow. it's nothing scary for you. In, in the best case, in the worst case scenario, you can just take it, and that's so fine. That's just an exchange. But what happens with this king is just horrible, and no pieces are developed. That's the main problem. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, knight c3 was uh, I felt the most active move, and then. I, I was going to play knight f6 or something like that, but yeah, the engine says it's almost winning for white now. Just a3. I thought I can still go back somewhere. Maybe, yeah, I don't remember. Something like that. But yeah, knight b5 and knight c7, that feels very dangerous. That can't work. Yeah. Yeah, I thought of, uh, of using the bishop, actually, uh, because it's lined up with the queen. Yeah, so here, when you choose where to put your knights, you should always start with the most active move. And knight c3 is like 100 times more active than knight d2. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Creates so many threats. Yeah, you're right. And after knight d2, I felt like, yeah, now it should be all fine for me because I'm able to deal with all of the threats. And once I do that, then I just have an extra pawn. And here was a, another very important moment. 
I felt like, yeah, bishop c6 is a good move, but I felt like you have uh, b4 here. And then b5 is a threat, and yeah, somehow it felt annoying for a second, but yeah, it turns out there is just rook 8 solving my problems. Yeah, this is why I pushed uh, the A pawn, not not the B pawn. Uh, I thought it was safer to push the A pawn. It would add up to the same in line with with your bishop. I was going to bring my bishop to uh, to B five. Yeah, but it doesn't threaten anything. The bishop is well protected, and also you give up the control of the B four square, which allows me, oops, to develop my bishop with a tempo. Yeah, this is what you ended up doing, yeah. Exactly, because it allows me to finish my development, and once my development is finished, it's immediately a huge, huge advantage for Black, just thanks to an extra pawn, and actually this pawn is a weakness now. Yeah. So you played bishop b5, but I can just exchange it, go on with knight f4, and now it's just a question of how Black can convert the advantage. But I thought that was a good achievement to block uh, two pawns on your side with just one pawn. But I guess it's not worth that much. What do you mean? This one? Yeah. Yeah, but you also have double pawns. Yeah, right. It's not like it's better for you than it is for me. Yeah. If you would have your pawn on d4, then yeah, you could say, I have this pawn, but those are doubled. No big deal. But now we ha we are in the same situation. Yeah, and that was a bad move, moving the knight. I should have kept yeah. him there. Yeah, yeah, that was really bad. So before the golden rule is before you make your move, try to understand what your opponent can can answer. And I just played yeah. f6. So it seems like e5 is on my agenda. Maybe yeah. not immediately because this pawn is sinking, but if you do that, of course, e5 is like screaming to be played. Yeah. But I thought I could get the rook. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, two pieces are always stronger than the rook. But I was getting a pawn as well. Yeah, but still, if yeah, you count you... that. Two pieces are like three plus three, six, and rook and pawn also six because rook is five. But two pieces have a disadvantage that they are more dynamic. In the yeah, end, right. it might be the case that the rook might be very strong if it has uh, open files, some ideas to be very, very dangerous. But yeah, usually two pieces are still stronger. Yeah, and bishop c5, I felt like an interesting idea because uh it's it creates a threat and it doesn't allow your rook to be here like to go aggressive to go all the way to c8 to c7 and then attack here yeah i did i didn't see that because i was too focused on saving my uh, my knight I, I couldn't understand why the uh, the king wasn't um taking the knight actually and i should have taken more time here because that was really simple to avoid i should have yeah. probably traded um yeah Whenever your opponent makes a move, you have to think what is the idea? Why did he play bishop c5? What he wants to achieve? Yes. And you start always with the most active moves, and that is the only check that is available. So, And the trick is, if you take here, now if I take with the pawn, then your knight is free to go. But I can take with the knight, and your knight has no squares to, to go. Yeah, so it was losing anyway. It was too late by then, yeah. Yeah, and here, of course, that's too late. To yeah. save the game. Yeah, I wanted to resign at that point, but you know, I thought I could play a few more moves. Yeah, that's fine. So you had your chance here with knight to c3. I mean, that was a huge move. It's not winning for white, it's plus one, but uh, well, black has to be very careful. Play a6, and then somehow this pawn is in trouble. It's not a situation you would like to find yourself in. That's so like, would would you long castle here to to gain a tempo and go really fast? Well, that's very problematic because your king is in huge trouble, or my king in this case is in huge trouble there on c8. So I don't see think that's possible for me. No, I mean as white, would you ah, long okay. would would you long castle to put pressure on the pawn and? That's one of the idea. Like yeah. You attack here twice, so I have to play e e6. But I guess you still have to to attack that queen somehow, and it feels like you can do that immediately. You don't have to wait another move because this pawn is still hanging. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. The engine says 
something I wouldn't really thought about here. Queen to a4 check because it's counterintuitive. Your opponent down, you have an initiative. Your opponent's king is weak, but you exchange the queens instead. It's not a not a usual idea. But the point is then still white is having so much initiative here, and all of those pieces are still stuck. Yeah. And and how come you did that? How come you waited so long to develop on your side? Because you, this is a, a known attack that you did against the Alpine. You you think it's a, it, it's something known this this way of playing, or you just improvised? Yeah, I pretty much improvised. I knew that Queen B six is a normal way to attack, but here it turns out you should not take the D four pawn. And maybe I felt it subconsciously, but I still wanted to to see what you have uh, there, how you're going to attack. It was interesting to take a look at that. I guess normally you should just develop here knight f6, and black is not, not in trouble here. The position yeah, is yeah. Oops, equal according to the engine. But yeah, I just wanted to see what's going to happen here. Like takes is still fine. Normally you take with the pawn here. And then, yeah, the engines is, is saying knight before, but that's too weird. I guess I would just have played normally with knight to f6 if I wouldn't have taken the pawn. But it's yeah. good to know that taking the pawn is actually not not great for black. Okay. But anyway, thank you very much. I, I had a lot of fun. Uh, it was really nerve-wracking for me. <laughs> yeah, thank you too. I yes. I enjoyed it uh, as well.